All right, so in this drawing, uh, we were making this ghost in this, uh, in this particular uh, layer. Uh, let's make one more new layer to explore one more concept. Uh, let's make a new layer. And I'm going to call this layer uh, fills and strokes. So one of the big concepts in Adobe Animate uh, is also this thing about fills and strokes, or the inside and the outside of a shape. So fills are on the inside, strokes are on the outside. We'll see this in action right now. But here I've made a new layer, and I've locked and hidden my previous layers. So that's what I would recommend, make a brand new layer. And we have these two... Um, at the moment, in my current view, I've got this brush tool and then this line tool. Now, because uh, we're also kind of using the, the workspace, the basic, basic workspace, it doesn't have every single tool. But there's also, for example, a, a pencil. But don't worry about that just yet. So the brush is designed to make fills which is also what the rectangle was doing and the oval and the polystar. They were making fill objects. They were making objects that represented a little piece of color that was on the inside of something. We didn't uh, have the difference between the outside and the inside yet, but now we will. The line tool, as well as the pencil, lets you draw the outside edge, the stroke of an object. So watch this for a moment. I am going to select the black color and then the line tool and draw something that looks like this. So I've drawn with three lines. I've just drawn three lines. Okay. And if I fill that in with the paint bucket with any color right there, this is a very obvious way of saying, yes, there's a stroke and then there's a fill. There's a, something on the inside, something on the outside, the stroke. And that particular shape that I drew, I can then move it or delete it, and then I get a different, I get, I get that object, which is a different kind of a triangle, more stylized than the one I could have drawn myself. And then I can grab these edges and keep refining it. So we'll do this in a moment. I'm just showing you here that uh, we have to now think about the concepts of fill and stroke, the inside and the outside of a thing. So let's try this together for a moment. Uh, let's, um, let's get the line tool. And now we have to pay attention that we have a, an inside color and an outside color. This one that is represented with a little cutout, that's the stroke, that's the outside color. I'm about to use the line tool with black to draw a black edge, or yellow, or blue, or gradient, or patterns, or whatever. So when I click on one of those, you know, I'm about to draw these straight lines with, with, this, uh, with this stroke. And yes, I can change the thickness of this, and the curve, and the style, and all of that, which we'll get to. So try this. For a moment, draw some sort of shape like this with four lines. I did a little triangle a moment ago, but now try like this, you know, kind of like a diamond shape, I guess. Just draw some straight lines. What we've drawn right here is with a tool that creates strokes. They go on the outside of a, um, of a shape. When we drew the original rectangle or circles, we were only drawing the fills, only the insides. They didn't have any outside, they didn't have any stroke. We could add one or remove a stroke, but we'll get to that. So I've drawn a shape, and now there's an enclosed. I've drawn a shape because it is an enclosed area. There's the edges of something. And in that enclosed area, I can use the paint bucket with the fill color and drop a color in there. So switch to the paint bucket, select your fill color. Now obviously, if I try to click over here, it won't fill in anything. There's no closed shape. 
if the shape were closed, then I could drop in a color there because it's a closed shape. So this is a very important concept in Adobe Animate. It's all about is the object, is the shape, is the design open or closed? If it's, if it's not closed, the color won't go in. So let me see here. If, for example, I had it like that, if I didn't notice and I didn't close the shape and I try to fill in the paint bucket, it won't let me because it's not closed. Okay, so fill in the color. And then we will see here further how Adobe Animate thinks about or represents these things in an interesting way. So watch this. If I switch back to my Select tool and I double click on any piece of the stroke, everything selects because it's all the same color. If I single click, one piece selects. If I single click one piece where there's an intersection, it stops and it only selects that. And then I press delete on the keyboard and that goes away. Press delete on the keyboard, that goes away. If I did the double click, everything selects. And I press delete, everything gets removed. But I could do it like this, that I just remove these edges, these like leftover edges. There's, a, there's an easier, there's a faster way to add an edge like that. It's a different tool. But I started off with strokes. I had four lines that were intersecting. And then I filled in a color to create a fill between them. And that stroke still, if I double click it, it selects it, and I can still go in and change the color. Let's see, blue. So all of these have changed to blue. They're all interconnected. I could select one edge and change one edge to a different color. hard to see on the projector, but there's yellow right there. I selected that one to only be yellow, and these other ones are blue. If I double click on the line, all of the, uh, of the stroke, all of the strokes that are the same color get selected, because they're the same color. And then the one that is the different color doesn't. If I double click the one of that different color, only that one selects. Again, it's hard to see on my projector, but only that one selected. This is how you can do, like, if you're doing your drawings and such, and you want to add the edges of your character's hair color. So instead of it just being a black line around your hair color of the character, it could be that, you know, darker shade of blue inside, uh, outside of, you know, the stroke inside of the inside fill of a different blue. So if you draw your shapes with, um, with these strokes, as we will get more practice with in the lesson, you'll be able to control that. And then you can still do what we did a moment ago, or if you move your mouse close to an edge, and then you pull the edge out, this automatically completes the fill. You've moved the, the stroke, and this color is being bound or controlled by the stroke. And it, um, it then grows. If you grab those corners, you know, I started off with a with like a triangle shape and now I'm making some other completely different shape, maybe the, the profile of a cartoon character or something. If I take it all back, undo. Now I change this stroke to be yellow, but the others are blue and I cannot undo more because it will undo too much. I can select the yellow one and then the blue ones and change them all at once. But right now, because this is blue and this is yellow, they don't all select. Well, holding Shift will let me select more than one thing. So if I click one time on the yellow, hold down Shift, and then click on the other pieces, I'll be able to select the other pieces. So that then all of them I can change to the same color. And now that they're all the same color, they all merge again. So if I click one time on this edge, I get this edge. 
Okay, but if I double click, everything selects because it's all the same color. Has anyone used any software like this before that kind of behaved like this besides Adobe Animate or Flash? Anyone? Yeah, this is kind of like very unique software, vector-based graphics software. You have to kind of think in a slightly different way than something classic like, uh, you know, Microsoft Paint or Photoshop. Um, there's a lot of little nuances to this, but the more practice, the, the, more, the more it sticks, hopefully. Um, the last thing here for this freestyle, um, let's say the, well, let's do it like this. Uh, if you have the brush tool, and you draw with the brush tool, obviously you can do that freehand, and we'll do the Wacom pen tablet soon enough. But with the brush tool, I still technically drew a fill, even though it looks like, okay, I'll get the paint bucket, and then I'll drop a different color. It's still... A fill. I've drawn on the outside with a fill. The thing is a fill. It looks like a stroke, but it's a fill because I drew. I used that tool, the brush tool. So it doesn't have some of the properties that I would see. Selecting the stroke, if I open up my properties window, I have various options for a stroke, like what, what edge and size and all of that. But the one that I just drew, that looks like a stroke, but it's not a stroke. If I select that, if I double-click that color, if I click that color and look at my properties, I get different properties. I'm not getting like a brush stroke effects or a size and such. So be careful here. You want to use the right tool for the right task. If you want an edge, you want the stroke tool. If you want to create classic shapes and such, perhaps the brush tool. If you don't want a perfectly straight line, but you still want curves and all of that for the edges of your drawings, well, this is hidden in this view, but if you go back to Edit Toolbar at the bottom, the three dots, and select the Pencil Tool, the Pencil Tool lets you freehand draw strokes. So sometimes you want to stroke around your edges of your drawings. Sometimes you want a brush. Because especially with my Wacom pen, my digital pen, I might be able to get some cool edges that I can't get from the completely mathematical one. So if I drag that pencil out there, and then now I can draw with the pencil. But this also, I was trying to draw like a sideways guy with a nose, but it drew it too perfectly straight. That is the... Um, that is the option that I have down here on the edge of my toolbar. Remember, I'm going to stretch out my toolbar a little bit over here so you can see it. With my pencil, I have a pencil mode, which is draw straight lines. People always say, well, I don't even know how to draw a straight line. Software like this will do it for you. And if I do need to draw perfectly perfectly square square, see, look at this. I'm, I'm kind of messing it up. But then with that mode on, and I let it go perfect square. This is with the pencil tool, set with the mode pencil mode, straighten. But if I want a more of a smooth pencil, a smooth stroke, I go with smooth and I draw it how I want, and then ink is the most like freehand, it smoothens you out the least. And if I'm trying to draw a circle, and that doesn't really look like a circle, but yeah, that's a circle because with that mode on. And then with the other mode on, it does mostly what I told it. And then with the third mode, it's exactly what I told it. So this inside and outside are separate objects. If I try to move my green square, if I click it and then move it, it only moves the fill because that's what I selected. If I double click it, you see the highlight now is the inside plus the outside. 
then everything moves. If I click only the edges, only that moves. I might have to double click. The one that I drew over here with all fills, if I click the inside, it's just the inside. If I double click the inside, it still only selects the inside. That's a special case there. When you use fills as strokes, it doesn't behave how you think. So there I would have to click and then shift click. I think on the outside, oh, if you double click. OK, if you double click the outside, the, the fake stroke, then everything selects. Or you can click and then shift click the other part. Everything selects. All right, so this was our freestyle part of things. We'll switch to the, uh, to the lesson now. But questions, the more you do this, the more it makes sense. But questions, differences between strokes and fills at the moment, vector and raster graphics, any questions? OK, so how do you like my uh, Picasso art right here? OK, so let's save this and create a brand new, uh, close this, and then create a brand new file. So file save, file close. And we'll go to File New. This time I'm following along in the lesson in the book. If you've got the book, you can follow as well. I'm on page 44. If you don't have the, the book, you can follow along on the lecture later, uh, on the video lecture. File New. We're going to do again the advanced HTML5, but this time I do want certain dimensions. And these dimensions will be part of what the assignment will be due on uh, Sunday. So in the, well, actually, let me back up to show you one thing. The end result of what we're going to do is going to be a logo with various stipulations. Um, but this is a possible, this is, what the, this is what the book has as the, as the ending result here. So we're going to do this, we're going to make a version of this together in just a moment. And then you're going to do your own kind of logo due on Sunday. Now, again, um, Canvas will tell you exactly what you need to do and what counts as points and so forth. But this is what we're going to do together in a moment. We're going to make a couple of coffee cups. So by looking at that coffee cup, what shapes might those be made out of? Squares and circles and such and ovals or whatever. And then we're also going to add gradients. Look at how it looks three-dimensional. Because it's like a gradient of color. We'll talk about that. Then we're going to see how we can add transparency. Do you see like this smoke? Or not smoke, but steam is a little transparent. You can see through it. You see the edge of the cup there. We've got these other kind of undulating shapes. That's, we'll see another way to make shapes and such. These have various blending modes. One color is on top of another color blending into each other. We'll see that. There is then text, then a few different fonts, maybe patterns or whatever. So the full details are in Canvas, but basically you're going to create your own logo because this class and almost all the other classes that you're going to take in our major is all about creating a portfolio, about learning the concepts of the software so you can get a, a job in the industry, or you can be a freelancer, you know, you can get your foot in the door and what you like to do, graphics, video games, websites, animation, whatever. And so these classes are all about creating content that add up to a whole, add up to a portfolio. So you might not have the idea right now, and you have until Sunday, to think of some kind of idea as like your personal logo, your personal name of your business, or whatever. It's, it's something that you make up, but you don't, have to, you don't have to stick with it the whole semester. You can change it. But let's say I'm going to do a company called Victor's Web Designs. That's perfectly fine. Or if I can think about something more creative, that'll be perfectly fine. So the details of the assignment will have, well, what's the name of your business or yourself or whatever? You know, what sort of tagline? You're not going to need these things right here. But what sort of tagline? Like what one phrase, what slogan defines what you do? So I often use the fictional business Victor's Bakery um, that I would put up there. Yep, Victor's Bakery. And then at the bottom, it's, it would be like, you know, tasty treats for tasty people, whatever. So I would figure out some sort of tagline and some sort of uh, name 
of my business. And that's the ultimate result by Sunday. But let's work on this together to make a version of this, because this will reintroduce shapes, fill, uh, fill strokes, vectors, rasters, fonts. We haven't really talked about fonts. We'll talk about text, um, special effects, and so forth. So that's going to be our end result after our main lecture. In Adobe Animate, then here, the size that we want for this project is 700 by 200. This is in our advanced HTML5 canvas template, 700 by 200. Leave it at pixels and leave it at 24 FPS. It's not going to animate yet. Create. That's another thing. You're not going to need to animate this assignment. Uh, let's do a file save as. Let's save this and let's call this lesson two. We have this wide document. And I also want to reset my, my workspace. We didn't do it when we started the day. Uh, but just so that we all have the same tools and are able to click on the same things, let's go up to the Window menu, Workspaces, and select Essentials. If you like the other design views, the other workspaces, that's fine. But if I point at a tool and you don't have that tool, you're in a different workspace, so you might not see it automatically. Window, Workspace, Essentials. Now we've got some icons at the top. We've got these icons like, let's say I'm kind of like scrolling around and I get to an edge. We have an icon at the top there to center it back onto the stage. It goes back there. So I'm moving around, center it back. There we go. Um, we've got this, which will make more sense when we have the actual pen tablet. So we'll, we'll get to those eventually. But when, when I draw, I know that I have a real piece of paper, and then I often like rotate the page around a little bit because the natural movement of my hand, I'm right-handed. Um, I know that my natural hand, I want to move the paper the right way to draw on paper. If there was only a way to do that digitally. Oh, there it is. There's that icon right there. So this, uh, this icon right here, rotation tool, this will give you a way to rotate the paper. It doesn't matter for us right now. We're using a mouse. But when we use the digital pens, this might be very useful. And you can then return it back to how it was, center on stage. So I'm just pointing it out. It's not necessary at the moment to use that. But that's the idea of rotating a paper in real life. And then centering it back with that first like, little target icon. The third one over here is if you've got stuff drawn in your design, and you turn that on, you won't see the stuff outside. I usually don't use that mode. I want to see that I've made stuff, and I might have it off of the canvas so I can work with it later. But if you want to, you can turn that off to not get distracted with other things on the design. We've got our zooms. Maybe fit in window is a good one, so it zooms in an X amount of time to see your design. Or maybe uh, show frame or show all, whatever you'd like. I'm going to go with fit in window. Okay, so we're going to create one of these cups. And the way the book has it, like I said, there's so many ways to do the same thing in Adobe Animate. And they're all right and they're all wrong. So here's one we're going to do. We're going to make a cup in a, in a slightly different way. We're going to start with a rectangle and then give it the round parts. You might have thought, well, let's start with the round parts and give the rectangle. Either way will work. But let's do it this way the book is saying. So um, we're going to uh, get the rectangle tool. And we're going to have a fill color of whatever you want, a stroke color of whatever you want. And then now, stroke size. You put that to whatever you want, but I guess we will go 
with anything um, you know besides the smallest value let's see what does it look like with five yeah five will work fine let's draw some sort of vertical rectangle kind of shape it's okay if my shape is outside of the boundaries of the canvas I can easily move it anything outside of it doesn't exist but it's okay for the moment and if you do want to move it you need to use the select tool and either double click the object to select the fill and the stroke or draw a selection around it all so you can move it around okay we're gonna draw two ovals one near the top here for the top of the mug and one near the bottom then we will refine it of course to shape it and such I want an oval near the top I'm going to switch to the oval at the moment I'm about to draw an oval that has an inside color plus an outside color and for the moment, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to draw a circle in here. Let's say I no longer want an inside or outside color of a shape. Right now, I've got selected a shape, and the inside and outside colors are defined. The fill and the stroke are defined. If you want to remove a color, you can click on the, on the icon for colors, and we have up here, no color. I'm going to draw a circle, but I don't need the circle to be filled in. Clicking on that, go to the No Color Selector. And somewhere around here, I'm going to draw a circle. This is the example where I might want to have snapping on, because here I've drawn the circle or the oval too far out. And when I cut some shapes away, it'll look weird. <coughs> So remember snapping sometimes it's useful sometimes it's not I'm going to go to view snapping and turn on snap to object because if I do that then when I draw even if I'm off by it a little bit it wants to snap into the right place so that it's the exact size so somewhere near the top I'm going to draw that top of the of the oval and using the principles of perspective and graphic design and all of that the larger oval that I make the more it looks like we're at an angle a certain angle if I put it somewhat like that I'm looking over it a little bit more if I put it like over something like this I'm looking at it at more of another kind of angle so whatever kind of circle at the top here to make the top Let's draw another circle somewhere near the bottom. Okay, so let's switch back to the selection tool. Back to the selection tool. I'm going to cut away a bunch of pieces I don't need. If I click at this top and delete and this if you click it and it doesn't go away that might mean that this stroke did not touch this stroke and therefore did not cut it if I click on that and delete it and the whole side deletes it means you didn't have an intersection so that's why snapping might be very useful and I'm going to click to delete the strokes over here to create a cylinder and then delete the fills that are outside of the cylinder and also I'm just gonna kinda shrink my cylinder just a little bit so that it fits within my design here Okay, so we need a cylinder. All of these colors can be changed at any point. If I, we're going to do a gradient eventually, but if you're having a hard time seeing it, uh, I'm using like a dark red plus a 
uh, mustard color. You can change it to any colors you want, and the great thing about vector-based graphics is that even if I started with, with a, a blue color right now, I can pretty easily add it to be a pink color later. That's a lot harder to do with bitmap uh, bit graphics. Vector graphics, since they're mathematically based, the equation is, you know, uh, edge equals red becomes red, uh, edge equals blue. So this just happens behind the scenes. I don't want a see-through cylinder. So I'm going to remove this part of the stroke. Now I have, I have the illusion that I'm only seeing the front side, the outside of the cylinder. Now watch this. We can then resize the edges of the, of the shape to to give you like perspective I'll show you how in a moment but we can do this where it started off as like a perfectly straight edged cylinder and then now I've kind of made it smaller in perspective let me show you how to do that so select your whole object it's multiple objects actually but the whole thing conceptually it's 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 a cylinder but it's separate things Select the whole thing. Quick ways, click and drag to select everything. Then switch over to the free transform tool with keyboard shortcut Q, perhaps. You get all of these edges, which you can, you know, push and pull and all of that. But what I want to do instead is change perspective. And that works by holding the control, the control key. When you drag a corner, you, you distort one corner. Well, I want both corners. Control shift will then let you change the opposite corners. So, select it and then with quick transform, hold control and shift on the keyboard and then grab a, a corner. And I'm going to kind of like, uh, like put the perspective to go downwards somewhat, how much, however much you want. All right, so it's no longer a perfect cylinder. It's been affected a little bit. Looks good. Anyone need a little help? OK, so I want to make like the, the lip of the, of the cup. We want a little bit of an inside lip. Now, depending how thick the stroke is, it'll be obvious or not. But I want to make an inner lip. I can start with the outer lip, duplicate it, and shrink it a little bit to, to make that lip. So um, when you click with your selection tool, uh, when you click the top lip, well, it, it only selected the top. When I shift click, it selects the other piece. And I want to copy and paste or duplicate and then shrink it down a little bit. So here's an example where if we do edit copy, edit paste in place, if I do the paste in center, I'm going to have to move it to the right place. If I do control D duplicate, it automatically moves it over a little bit. But if I do edit paste in place, it's right there on top. And then when I switch over to the free transform, I can shrink the size a little bit. If it's snapping too much, before I, before I move it, I can then turn off snapping. Edit, or uh, view, snapping, to object. There you go, now it's doing exactly what I want. So if it's kind of jumping around too much, you have snapping on. OK, 
see now I've got the lip of the top of this object. I selected both the top and bottom. It's two things now because of the intersection here. So click and then shift click. I selected both top and bottom. I did control copy or edit menu copy and then edit paste in place and then resized it. I want to make the liquid inside of this shape. So one possible way is I could get the, the top shape and then edit copy, edit paste in place, and then move it down over here somewhere. So inside of the cup, there's going to be some liquid right here, and it's coming from this top circle. I'll just have to then delete these pieces over here. Or I could resize this top piece. There's a lot of ways to do it, right? So maybe maybe like that. So if I click the top piece, edit copy, edit paste in place with the arrow keys, I could move it down exactly where I need it. Deselect. And I have a, a spot to click here to delete. Click here, click here, delete. Click delete, click delete, click delete. So this is what we've got so far. We've got this cup with a lip, and then we've got liquid on the inside. If I want to make the, uh, the cup not perfectly straight edged, or you can grab these edges and just bowl bow it out some amount. Maybe I could have one side of it curved, <laughs> the other side straight. <coughs> one side very curved, one side less curved. This is, there's going to be a lot of chances for creativity. If you pull the edge down, see it bulges down there, pull it up there. So just curve that some amount. based so maybe I don't like the size of those strokes anymore I can use a select tool to double click and then as many of the same color that are connected will select and then I can go to my properties panel and say okay I don't like five anymore maybe three is good enough so you can do the slider or click the number and type a number Press enter. And so I started with five, and it was okay, but then I see it's too thick. And then now the inside part, because it was not touching the outside, wasn't selected. It's normal. Then now I have to double click the inside stroke object and change that as well. And I can even do this very fine-tuned in, in terms of maybe the liquid 
uh, the liquid shape, I can select just that and make that 5. Now you will see that it spills over to the rest of the line. But you have full control over every single stroke, every single fill with this software. Okay, let's say we wanted to do the little handle on the left side or the right side. So I want uh, the gripping handle here or here. So it's going to be a circle, with an inner circle on the edge. What I could do before I start drawing anything, I need, I need those exact colors. I know I'm about to draw those with those colors. I know I want the inside of mustard and the outside of red, but I forgot which one. So I can set my colors first and then draw my shape. And if I don't remember which of the colors I clicked on, I can click the fill color. And then when I go outside of the color picker, I can click on anything to extract that color. So I want that fill color. I don't remember which one I clicked on, so I can just click there and click there. And then the stroke, I want that also, whatever color I picked there. So I want to draw uh, a little handle. It's going to go over here. So that means it's going to be a donut shape. Start with a circle. I'm going to copy the outside shape, paste it in place, shrink it a little bit. So it's an inner shape, delete the inner shape, and then combine that shape with that shape. So I'm going to select that outside, edit copy, edit paste in place, free transform to shrink it some amount. Can delete that inner shape and then move this shape somewhere over here. Maybe too big. I think I left my stroke at five, and these were three. We can easily change that. Yeah, I think I did. So if I select if I select this and this, yeah, those were at 5. So I can put those back to 3. And then now delete where there's any intersection. So I really like that in this software that when you get good at this, you're combining these shapes and then making really complex, interesting things. It's still all just mathematically defined. We've got this. So. We'll do two more things, then we'll take one, one more break. Uh, I want to fill in some colors. This is a plain flat color. We'll fill in a, a gradient color. I also want to fill in a color for the liquid, like coffee, I guess. Um, but the uh, filling in colors could be a plain, solid shape. It could be a gradient shape that blends from one color to another. It could be a complex gradient that blends from a dark color to a light color and then back to a dark color. It could be like a spotlight gradient or a linear gradient. It can be pretty complex. And that's done with the paint bucket tool. 
paint bucket adds fills. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it last time, but do you see that some tools have a little triangle? When you click and hold there, uh, you get more tools. So we have paint bucket, which fills in fills. We have ink bottle, which adds strokes. So if you first drew a shape, and then you wanted to add a stroke to it, you can use the ink bottle tool. But I want the paint bucket so that I can drop in a simple coffee color to my um, to my like liquid shape there. Um, I don't know, that's coffee, I guess, there. Matcha tea, if you want, I suppose. It's already in like a terracotta cup, so... <laughs> it's very appetizing, obviously. Well, that was a simple color that got filled in. If I want to do a gradient, We've got the ability to use gradients, which are colors that blend. There's a couple of ways to do it. So there's some built-in gradients, but then sometimes we want to create our own gradients, our own blendings of colors. So one way to pick a pre-made gradient, then we'll make our own. If you select the paint bucket, right now this says the fill is a solid color. And at the bottom, we have a few, we have a few simple gradients, and we'll make our own in a moment. But if I select like this red one, and then hit it with the paint bucket, now I've got this blend right here. It starts off red, and then it blends over to black. We don't have a lot of built-in gradients, because we'll usually be creating our own. So there's an amazing chrome uh, gradient. But we'll often have to create our own. And then maybe I need the angle of the things to go in a certain way. So instead of doing it here from the color style, we have window menu, colors. Right now, we are checking one of the options of this tool, the fill. So we have a whole panel color, which will let you create any color blends and fills and such. So if you go to window color, you get this panel, which is inside of this little artist's color palette. And we've got a fill color at the top here, and we've got these various modes. Do we want a solid color, linear gradient, radial bitmap? You can fill in a pattern. I'm going to do linear gradient. And so this says it's going to go from black to white. Well, I can click on each of these starting and ending points and pick a different color. And then I can add places where the color further changes. So let's say I'm going to start with, and I click on that first one, and then I click on that second one. I'm just picking random colors for the moment. And then I can click somewhere in between that color ramp to add a different color. Color's gonna start with this blue and then go to black, or dark, and then back to light. So we have the solid color, the linear gradient, it goes from left to right. Radial gradient, it'll start from a center point and go out. And then when I when I click and drag, 
I can put the gradient where I want, or if I just click one time, the gradient appears. But if I click and drag, I can make the gradient go a certain way. Now I'm just picking random colors. I'll pick a better color in a moment. Now the fill is a gradient instead of a solid color. So in the color panel, I'm going to define a color. I can remove colors here. I can move these colors around and then click it and drag it far away to, to remove it. Okay, well, mine crashed as I was picking my perfect color, but that's the perfect time to do a little pause for you to fill in your color and make sure you've got a cup designed, and then we'll take one more break, and when we come back, we'll further work on the design. So it's 3.10, it's 3, zero, uh, 3 o'clock, let's take a break until 3.10, make sure you've got a cup with a gradient. And then we'll continue with that in a moment. If yours works, take a little break. If not, take a moment to finish that, and then we'll be back at 310.